configuration of EHRP. Now in this section, we'll continue with EHRP. Like if you go back, we have seen some of the basic process of the EHRP and the features of the EHRP. And then we have seen some EHRP metric calculation process, how it's going to do, how it's going to do that. Now in this section, we'll continue mostly with the practicals. In this section, we'll see, we'll take some three routers and we'll verify how EHRP is going to be configured. Now the configuration is more simple and more similar to your RIP configurations. In the first line, we need to tell router EHRP and then we need to define some autonomous system number. Now this number can be any number ranging from 65,000 to 65,535 and this number can be any number. It can be given by administrator. Now it's not mandatory that it should be the highest number given by the service provider, but it can be any number. But ensure that this number must be same on both the routers in order to form the neighborship, in order to exchange the routes. If I use 100 on one router, if I use 200 on another router, in that case they will not form the neighborship because uh, in order to exchange the routes, in order to form the neighborship, matching the AS number is the condition. They should match the same AS number. It can be any number, but use any number in between 1 to 65,535. And then after that, we need to just advertise. Like if we just get back to router one, I'm going to advertise, I'm going to use EHRP 100 as my AS number and I'm using 100 everywhere. So just to ensure that they will form the neighborship and they will exchange the routes. And on the router one, I'm advertising these two networks. One is on the 10 dot network here, one dot network here. And then on the router two, I'm advertising 10, 11 and two dot network, these three networks. And on the router 3, I'm realizing my WAN interface and the LAN interface, these two networks. So after that, the verification, you'll see show IP, HRP neighbors, you'll see the neighbors shift come up and you'll see 1.1 and 3.1 and 2.1, they all will be able to communicate with each other. So let's try to verify how to configure OS EHRP. Let's start one by one. So I'm going to start with router 1. And on the router one, let me just move this topology on the left side. You can see the topology anyway. Mm, let me let me just start with the router one. So on the router one, I'm advertising the two interfaces. So I'm going to use EHRP. Now before that, if you go and check the show IP interface brief, the interfaces are up. And if I give show IP route or show IP protocols, I don't see any of the routing protocols running here. So the basic prerequisite is to configure uh, the connectivity and assign the IP addresses as per the diagram. Now the next thing, I'm going to say uh, router EHRP. I can define the AS number. In this scenario, I'm using 100 and advertise your own directly connected networks. So I'm going to advertise my uh, 192.168.1.network and 192.168.10.network uh, and 192168 one dot network and then on the router 2 let's go to router 2 on the router 2 getting into the command line config mode router ehrp 100 advertising the three interfaces 2 dot network in the lan and 10 dot network in the van and 11 dot network in the van so i'm going to say network 10 dot network in the lan in the van I can see once I advertise this network, you'll see the neighborship adjacency has been established message. Now, which means when you, when you configure this router, router one sends a hello, and the router two sends a hello, and they automatically they become neighbors of each other. So, if you want to verify, we can verify with a command called show IP OSPF neighbor. Sorry, I'm running EHRP, so I have to use show IP EHRP neighbor. I can see the neighborship is established. So I'll come back uh, more on this neighbor table, but let's finish off the configuration on the other things like advertising the Lavender network also. Done. So let's go to router 3. On the router 3, I'm going to configure router EHRP100 and then advertising 192.168.3.network network and advertising the Lavender network here. Now once I do this, verification time so now the verification commands i'm going to use the first command on the router 2 let's go to router 2 the first command i'm going to say show ip ehrp neighbors so i should see two neighbors 
I got one neighbor of 10.001 and the other neighbor has 11.002 that's my 11.002 and the neighborship is up and they're connecting from this interfaces and the hold on time so by default these neighbors are sending the hello messages for every five seconds you can see 10 and then 14 again so which means for every five seconds the neighbors are sending the hello messages and if this if this timer goes to zero it will remove the entry from the neighbor table and it will look for alternate routes so the next thing let's verify on the router one routing table if i go to router one show ip route i can see the routes are learned and you can see 182 the routes are learned through d you can see d something here d represents it's an ehrp and then uh, this first value represents the administrative distance and the next value represents the cost now the cost is something calculated based on the bandwidth and delay now, whatever the bandwidth and delay we are using based on that and if you change the bandwidth it will automatically change the change the cost which means if you increase the bandwidth or decrease the bandwidth it will change the cost and also if we change the delay also it will change the cost values and these updates are coming from 10.002 so automatically it will write the next top address as 10.002 because the updates are coming from the router 2 and if you if you want to verify you can verify show ip ehrp topology table uh, right now you will see only one table because you can see only one route here via one route but if you have one topology something like this let's say i have one more connection from this side and if you have topology like this then you'll see multiple routes in the topology table so right now you'll see only one wire okay and then there is one more command we can use show ip protocols now show ip protocols will provide you some more information like uh, what protocol we are using and what is the metric weight k values by default k1 is 1 k3 is 1 that is bandwidth and delay and what's the maximum hop counts maximum hop counts support by default 100 but we can change to 255 uh, by using command i think it should support here EHRP uh, maximum hop count there is a command called maximum hops uh, metric wait this is to change the k values this is something the command is not supported here but we can we can use the command called met EHRP maximum hops command uh, it's something not supported on this program here but uh, that's a limitation of this packet tracer you cannot get into some advanced uh, configuration kind of things and right now we are addressing these two networks and the gateway is this one router 2 is the gateway that is another router here and if i try to ping from from the first computer to another computer here let's say i'm trying to ping from uh, from the router 1 i'm trying to ping to 192.168.3.1 i should be able to get the reply so i'm trying to ping from here to this computer and even if I want, I can trace. If I trace, it shows 10.002 and 11.002, and then finally it shows here. So most of the time in the production network, you may not be testing from the PCs, but still, uh, you can even test from here as well, like ping and trace command. And if you're doing the trace from the piece from the router, we need to use tracer trace root command. It's going to give the same output here. Uh, it doesn't make difference whether you are pinging from the router or, or the PCs here. It's going to be the same. Like in the previous sessions, we have seen from PC to PC. Here, I just showed you how to ping from the router and the trace as well. But at the end, you can go to this end, end devices and you can try pinging from these devices. They will communicate with each other. So it works fine. Okay. So one of the major advantage of using EHRP is it's, it's a little bit simple protocol. It's easy to configure and easy to verify and also it really adds some less overhead when you compare it with OSPF. So that, that makes EHRP a more uh, scalable and better protocol than RIP other things. Uh, OSPF is also much scalable because um, OSPF supports unlimited number of hops but again EHRP adds some less overhead when you compare with OSPF. So probably in our next sections we'll be getting into more uh, in detail. On the remaining thing remain other protocol like ospf but what i suggest to you is you, i suggest you to design one more topology something like this connecting from router one to router router two already we have a connection and then to router three and then uh, one more topology like this and then you can try pinging from here to here 
and you can see the path calculation by default it might be using this route and shut down this link if it is using that route trace and verify if you shut down this link we can go to interface s0 by 1 and I can give shut down shut down will make the interface down and once this link goes down uh, you'll see automatically it uses this route now this is something you can try it out and you can design some more topology like connecting some multiple routers like this and then some multiple routes and then you can connect some computers here and we can verify this so in case of dynamic routing protocols the more bigger the topology goes still it's going to make the things easy for you because automatically select the best route if that best route fails automatically it uses the second best route